Hi, this is Paul Palmer. I've been to part two of the um, GDP symposium with the MHRA today. And one thing that stood out above everything else for me was identify of, identification of unusual order patterns. Now the product involved is was a, a nasal decongestant. That's not something that I would normally think of emphasizing as something for misuse. But in actual fact, pseudoephedrine is a, a precursor to methamphetamine. And as a result, there's been millions of tablets going astray and being placed on the market as methamphetamine to the estimated value of 22 million. 22 million pounds on a street value when you, you're probably charging, what, thousands for it? Tens of thousands, maybe? It's a big markup. So it's, it's a sort of trade that's going to happen and people are going to work out how to do it. And then they also talked about the 100 um, limit, 100 pack limit that people have introduced at the uh, recommendation of the agency for when they actually start investigating in more detail customers. So customer qualifications should happen anyway, whatever level. But if you're putting more focus on it at a certain level and those that are in the, um, I don't know, I can't think of a better way to put, put it, just like dodgy. The people that are not actually in the official supply chain, if they know that it's going to be a hundred where you're going to start investigating in detail, then they're placing their orders just below hundred. And of course it's the highest strength because they're the ones that are going to get misused. The supply chain is getting more complicated. I didn't realize that there's over 2000 wholesalers in the UK. Actually, is that Britain? Brexit is confusing the issue now, I think. And uh, 500 plus manufacturers, MIA holders. Okay, some of them might not be manufacturing themselves. They might be doing the import, wholesale import probably from India, China, different places. But I do think the landscape in the UK, in Great Britain, in Britain, is going to change. And the complexity, I think, is going to get increased, unfortunately. And the difficulty for us to identify the legal supply chain is going to increase. It's going to make it harder for us to make sure that we're actually doing the job right, making sure that we protect the public, making sure that the products that we place on the market are not only legal, but they're also safe. Because as your supply chain gets more complex, then the control on it is harder to maintain. So actually, it's going to be really important that you do qualify your suppliers and you do qualify your customers rigorously. So the way to do that is firstly, you get a copy of the license. You translate it, you get a notarized copy. Then you've got to do independent checks into the company as well. Make sure that the, the company registration is correct. Make sure you verify the phone number by calling it. Funnily enough, that was actually one of the things that allowed somebody to pick up an illegal um, purchase. The phone number didn't work. Then you've got the website, of course. But be careful because there's been a lot of phishing going on. Phishing spelt with a P, not an F. Okay, it has got a P-F-I-S. Um, but just registering new domains for an existing company but with a spelling difference. The ones that were, um, that were highlighted had just one letter difference, one of them. So you really need to be careful who you're supplying to. The other thing they talked about was the free email addresses. Free email addresses is, is quite a common one that I, I'm not so sure that I would frown on it, but I, I advise people against using a free email address. And if somebody, contacts me using Hotmail, for example, then I question it. Even, even if it's not pharmaceutical related, I still question it because I think, well, they're telling me that they're an official company, 
but they're using a Hotmail email address. So I don't trust it straight away. Now, if it's in the pharmaceutical supply chain, absolutely nowhere would I accept a, a, a free email address, whether it's Hotmail, Gmail, whatever. It's just not appropriate. And then, of course, you can look for the SSL certificate. Make sure when you look at the top on the browser that the, the little lock comes up. Now, that one's a bit more complicated because you have to do quite a lot to make sure it's consistently working. Um, I know my, my website has the SSL certificate installed, but on certain browsers, it doesn't work properly, which is rather annoying. So what can we learn from this? Well, we're going to have a harder job in Britain with the supply chain. We're going to have to take more care, more caution to make sure the product that we are placing on the market is safe and that's appropriate for our customers and make sure that we're not inadvertently supplying somebody who's then going to divert the product to somewhere else. So watch out for those unusual order patterns. Make sure it's clear, not only in your procedures, but in the training that you provide to every single employee that's involved in the supply chain. Well, I think that means we're gonna to have to train everybody throughout the whole company, because you never know who it is that's gonna pick up something that's not quite right, something that's not as it normally happens. They mentioned the people on the shop floor and it being really important to ensure that they have a clear understanding of what they're doing and what to expect, what to look out for. Now, I've always thought that was the case because they're the ones who are handling the product. But in some companies, they're the ones that don't get the additional training that they really need. So I always recommend you train everybody, not just the ones at the top, not just the ones with the manager status, train everybody in good distribution practice, train everybody in recognizing differences between what should normally happen and what's happening today. Train everybody in looking out for unusual order patterns, whether it's the person just keying it in or the person that's verifying the uh, pick list, make sure everybody knows, make sure everybody's on the lookout. Falsified medicines has been highlighted a lot, but unusual order patterns is something that we rarely think about. It's just mentioned once or twice now and then, but it's just as important as all the rest of the controls that we have in place. That's it for me for today. It's Paul Palmer.